Years ago in Colombia, lived a couple that had two twin sons, Adam and Christopher, and even though they were identical on the outside, they had very different personalities. Adam helped his family as much as he could. He was a polite and respectful boy and would also get the best grades in school. He was a great son. Meanwhile, his twin brother Christopher was exactly the opposite. His family would argue with him every day because of his disobedience. He neglected his schoolwork, insulted his teachers, and even got into physical fights often. His parents would always wonder how, despite receiving the same upbringing and education, their sons could be so different. Then, one day in his backyard, Christopher met with a group of friends who were fans of dark rituals and summoning games. Whenever he met with them, they would contact all kinds of spirits and otherworldly creatures. They usually used a Ouija board for that, but for this ritual that wouldn't be enough. They wanted to summon evil spirits, so they had to complete a number of challenges to do it successfully. Meanwhile, Adam was in his bedroom studying for an exam. He would sometimes look through the window to see what his brother was doing, but him and his friends would always hide behind a tree in the backyard. However, at one point he saw Sarah cross the garden, the girl he had a crush on. Adam immediately got up the chair and rushed downstairs. Christopher invited the young lady to meet with him, but she had no idea of his true intentions offering her body to the beings of darkness he and his friends were going to summon. In his summoning book, it said that it was essential to offer a heart which was good, generous, and innocent, and Sarah had all of those qualities. Adam went into the yard and saw how the group chained Sarah up. He yelled at Christopher and ordered them all to unchain her and go home. He also tried to approach Sarah, but the group pushed him away. It's as if they were possessed and wouldn't stop repeating in unison. The game is not over yet. The game is not over yet. Sarah started to cry and yell in horror. She was terrified and wanted to escape out of there. Christopher then grabbed a knife and cut the skin of the young lady's arm, making a line of blood flow from her wound. Seeing that, Adam started to fight the entire group. Unfortunately, they all hit him until he collapsed on the ground. They then kicked him while he was down, so he wouldn't have the strength to get back up. When they saw Adam no longer had the strength to interrupt the ritual, they held hands in a circle around Sarah and started to recite an incantation. She wouldn't stop crying and struggling, trying to free herself from the chains that tied her feet and hands. Adam noticed that a strong anger was starting to take a hold of him. He felt as if his veins were burning and how fury and hatred invaded his body. He took a deep breath, managed to get up, and grabbed the knife that Christopher had used before. Adam managed to stab all of Christopher's friends one by one, leaving his brother for last. Adam approached Christopher, who for some reason didn't even try to escape. Adam looked directly into his brother's eyes and stabbed him in the heart. As Christopher was bleeding to death, his last words to Adam were, the game is not over yet. One day, another soul will free me. Adam responded saying, as long as my soul remains, I will not let you escape from hell. That will be your game. Adam unchained Sarah and told her to escape. The young lady rushed out of there, and just when she was about to get out of the yard, she looked back and saw Adam stab himself with the knife and fall on his knees. A year after what happened, Sarah still had not recovered from that horrible experience. That afternoon, she was about to be sacrificed as part of a satanic ritual, and then she witnessed how the boy she liked killed his brother and his friends to then end his own life. She was sick of visiting the graveyard, spending afternoons with her psychologist, and taking sleeping pills. Every night she would see visions of Adam in her room, trapped with Christopher and his friends somewhere between life and death. They were all chained in some sort of limbo where Adam was constantly tormented as part of their demonic game. Adam sacrificed his life to save hers, so now it was her turn to do something to help him. Sarah started to study different books about witchcraft and invocations and met with a group of young people who were fascinated about those subjects. She looked for ways to contact her friend, and once she had the people and the necessary materials to do it, she didn't hesitate to try. Sarah invited her new friends to her house and explained who were Christopher and Adam. She didn't want her friends to be deceived in any way, and they had to understand very well what was their mission, liberate Adam so he could finally rest in peace and leave Christopher and his friends trapped in their twisted game. When Sarah's parents finally went out, the group started the ritual. They placed a lit candle on each window and started to recite a number of incantations. 
Then all of the candles in the house suddenly went out on their own. Christopher and his friends had started their game. Sarah looked everywhere and yelled, I challenge you, Christopher. She suddenly felt an intense headache. Christopher was chained in limbo, but that didn't prevent him from brutally attacking his opponents. Sarah's friends quickly lit all the candles again. Their light would help protect them from evil otherworldly beings. The next step was summoning Adam. Sarah stood in front of a mirror and said, Adam, your brother's back. Suddenly Sarah saw Adam right in front of her. He was chained by the feet and hands, just like she was on that fateful afternoon, and a few seconds later his face vanished. Sarah had explained the mission to all of her friends, but none of them knew the true risks of Christopher's game. Turns out she had to offer herself as a sacrifice once more. However, if she managed to free herself, she would save Adam so he could finally rest in peace. However, if she didn't manage to free herself, the sacrifice would exchange her soul for a chained soul. In other words, Sarah's soul would now be trapped between life and death, and Christopher would come back, thus winning his game. When everyone understood the danger Sarah was putting herself in, they all got extremely worried. But it was too late. They knew how dangerous it was to abandon the ritual without finishing it. There was no turning back. They started the first challenge. The group chained Sarah's feet and hands and made a cut on her arm. Then all the memories of that horrible afternoon came back to her. She was very scared, but was determined to win the game. The group then started to recite the necessary incantations, and suddenly the room felt bigger, and a thick fog started to invade it. Sarah's chains tightened. Now the spirits were the ones who had her chained. From the darkness, a crib with a baby appeared, but this baby was extremely strange. He had claws instead of nails, and blood was coming out of his mouth. In his hands there was a key, which was necessary to get to the next challenge. Sarah's group had to take the key from the baby without waking him up. If they did, the baby would slaughter them all. They managed to carefully get the key from him. Despite his claws, the baby seemed peaceful and defenseless. However, Sarah told them to kill the baby. It wasn't really alive, but it wasn't dead either. They had to free him from his earthly hell, so that nobody could ever do that challenge again. They all obeyed Sarah. They trusted her, and were convinced that she knew what she was doing. The moment they stabbed the little one in the heart, one of Sarah's chains fell to the floor. They overcame the first challenge. They were on the right track. Sarah had studied the ritual very well, and knew that the next challenge was one of the most complicated ones. The group started hearing noises in the kitchen. They saw several evil beings there, chained and eating at the kitchen table. They had to pass as other chained evil beings and get a secret code. In this challenge, Sarah's friends couldn't help her. If any of the chained spirits saw a mortal, they would try to kill them. Thus, Sarah had to pass as one of them and get the number they needed. She went in doing little jumps, since her chained feet didn't allow her to walk. There were several chained zombies in the kitchen, all of them enjoying the food on the table. Human flesh, to be precise. The stench was unbearable, but Sarah had to endure it and not raise suspicion. She sat on the last empty chair at the table, and saw on her plate a child's hand. She couldn't help but gag. Noticing that, one of the zombies leered at her. Sarah couldn't let them discover her, so she lowered her head and bit the hand. When she started to chew, the zombie stopped looking at her and kept on eating. Sarah had to find the secret code as soon as possible. She didn't know how much longer she could stay there without throwing up. As she chewed on the hand's index finger, she saw that the plate of the zombie next to her had four numbers engraved on it. She couldn't see them clearly. So with a quick movement, she pushed the food off the plate and managed to read the code, 3663. The zombie realized she was immortal and tried to alert the rest but Sarah managed to headbutt him in the face. All the zombies stopped eating and stood up, but she yelled, He's a human! He's a human! He's pretending to be one of us! All the zombies plunged toward him, and she took advantage of the commotion to exit the kitchen with the code memorized. She went back to her group with one less chain, having completed the second challenge. All they had to do now was free Adam using the code and the key. Then, two chests appeared in front of them, one had written on it the number 3663, the other one said 6336. Sarah started feeling doubt. She was no longer sure if she remembered perfectly the combination of numbers. If she opened the wrong chest, all of their efforts would have been in vain, and her soul would be exchanged for Christopher's. Sarah closed her eyes and let her intuition choose. 
She pointed to one of the chests with her head and told her group to open it. They introduced the key, turned it, but the chest was empty. They were puzzled. Why was it empty? What did that mean? The room fell into a deep silence. The friends who accompanied her trembled with fear, but no one dared to say a word. Suddenly, they could hear a voice. You have fallen into my trap, Sarah. You have released my spirit, and now I am free to roam in search of revenge. It was Christopher. An icy wind began to blow, and the candles extinguished one by one, leaving everyone in complete darkness. Sarah's heartbeat quickened. Suddenly, her friends began to yell, but their voices sounded distant. She desperately searched for them in the dark, but they were no longer by her side. A chill ran down her spine as she realized that they had been dragged to another place by Christopher's spirit. She felt completely alone. Suddenly, a blurry, ghostly figure appeared in front of her. It was Adam, but his face was changed and his gaze was empty. Sarah realized he wasn't really him, but an illusion created by his brother's spirit. The false Adam reached out to her and said in a sinister voice, Join us, Sarah. Join this eternal dance of terror and darkness. There is no escape for you. Sarah's heart was pounding, but she was filled with a strength and courage, rejecting the false Adam's offer and screaming with all her might. I will not submit to you, Christopher. I will not let fear control me. The spirit roared in rage, and the room shook violently. Objects flew through the air, and the young woman struggled to stay on her feet. In the midst of the chaos, a memory from her childhood surfaced in her mind. It was a sacred place, an old abandoned chapel in the woods. She remembered the stories her late grandmother told her about the power of faith and the protection of the divine. Desperate, she called on the name of God and closed her eyes, trusting that someone would hear her. In an instant, everything stopped. The whirlwind subsided and the room returned to normal. Sarah was no longer in the room. She was in the middle of the forest chapel. Candlelight flickered around her and a feeling of peace and protection washed over her. Her grandmother, kneeling on one of the benches, kept her hands together in prayer and smiled at her. A tear fell down her cheek. It had been years since her grandmother had died and seeing her again had moved her. But the calm was short-lived and suddenly Christopher appeared at her side. The chapel seemed to tremble at his presence. You can't get away from me. Sarah looked around and found a wooden cross in the corner of the chapel. She walked over to it and held it firmly in her hands. Your power is great, Christopher, but you are not invincible, she said in a firm voice. Faith can be more powerful than any darkness. With a piercing cry, the young woman raised the cross towards the spirit. A brilliant light emanated from it, filling the chapel with a strong glow. Christopher writhed and screamed in pain unable to bear the divine presence. Sarah closed her eyes and said a silent prayer, trusting that God would protect her. When she opened them again, she was back in the same room as before. The place was silent once more, and the candles were burning again. Sarah was exhausted, but also relieved to see that she had managed to repel Christopher. With shaky steps, she approached the chests again. She didn't know if she really had passed the challenge or if all that had happened was another illusion created by the vengeful spirit. However, this time she did not hesitate. She selected the chest with the combination 6336 and with shaking hands inserted the key. To her surprise and relief, the chest opened, revealing a bright light within. Sarah had to squeeze her eyes shut. When she finally opened them, she saw something move inside the mirror. It was Adam, unchained with his serene, calm gaze. He had been released. <laughs> Adam smiled weakly and said softly, Thank you for saving me, my friend. Sarah felt tears fill her eyes as she touched her fingers to the mirror, as if trying to grasp at his. Finally, she had achieved what she longed for, to free Adam's soul from the darkness. 
Meanwhile, Christopher was still trapped in some dark corner with no way out. He had lost his game and his soul was doomed to wander forever in the darkness he himself had sought. She had managed to save her friend, but the price had been high. Her new friends who had accompanied her on that dangerous mission were lost somewhere between life and death, victims of those sinister games. Suddenly she heard a whisper. He was Christopher again. Don't you dare celebrate your victory, Sarah. I will continue to haunt you in your nightmares. You will never escape me. Sarah's eyes filled with determination. She knew she couldn't allow Christopher's spirit to haunt her forever. Trembling inside, she steeled herself and faced the darkness. I am no longer afraid of you, Christopher. Light and faith will protect me from your attempts at revenge. I will not yield to your threats. The atmosphere became even more oppressive, but Sarah didn't back down. She clutched the cross she had brought with her from the abandoned chapel and began to recite a prayer. Brilliant light emanated from the cross, creating a protective barrier around her and Adam. Christopher's spirit howled in rage and tried to unsettle her with terrifying and distorted images. But Sarah didn't give in to the hallucinations. She closed her eyes and concentrated on her faith. Little by little, Christopher's evil presence weakened, unable to penetrate the barrier of light Sarah had created. The vengeful spirit became a distant whisper, and finally, he disappeared into the darkness. When Sarah opened her eyes, the atmosphere had returned to normal. The room was quiet and serene, with no sign of Christopher's spirit. Her friends hugged her tightly. They were back! Sarah turned to the mirror and there she could see Adam's reflection, who looked at her with gratitude and relief. You did it. You beat Christopher and you pushed him away. Thank you for saving me. Now I can rest. She smiled, feeling a deep sense of accomplishment. Although her heart was filled with sadness knowing that she would never see him again, she knew that she had done the right thing in freeing his soul. Although the nightmare was over, the memory of those events would remain in the young woman's heart forever. Thus, the story of the brave Sarah who faced darkness became a legend of terror that would remain in the memory of the residents of that town in Colombia. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode!